Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We only have one mission left, it seems, and that is Under Pressure, the one where we have to land on EVE with a vessel with 10 Kerbals and return it to Kerbin. And we are going to do testing for this before actually attempting it, but before we get to that testing, I am going to deal with the little probe that we left on the surface of Gilly. So we're going to the tracking station and Checking in, checking in on that, and we want to get that probe back to its mothership. Had some problems with it in the previous session, so we'll see. All right, SAS is on and lift off. So we need to get back to there, and we should go southwest. Well, like that, we're getting to that orbit a little bit early, it would seem. Let's just go more horizontally. I think at this point we're high enough. I don't know why the time warp restrictions around Gilly are so tight. Why? I'm trying to get number two, the two number twos together. So it looks like the target sort of icon is like that. So that answers my question from the intro to the new patch video. 2.3 kilometers, okay, that's good. Alright, we can deal with that. We'd all milk science out of Gilly like crazy if it, if it wasn't for the time warp restrictions. Ah, the sun's in my eye. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I think it is acting a little bit weird right now. I was expecting some rotation, but it isn't rotating much. I should use fine controls. <laughs> Caps lock. Mm. Okay, well, it was very tolerant of the docking as usual. Okay, while well, the probe is back into the nose, we'll just close the nose up, up for now. They're just gonna hang out here. I don't think there's anything to trans. Oh, there is a little bit of. Not a little bit, actually, quite a lot of units, electric units of transmission. We're not gonna be able to do it all at once. Okay, well, I guess it managed to finish all that. So, if we can return the stuff, that's 1,754 more. Uh, this can't return on its own, so we're going to have to refuel it if we want to bring it back. And then we can send it with the Star Lab out to all sorts of places. We will see about that. Let's take a look at R&D to see. We've got 6,000 science. Is there anything here that we should consider helpful for our EVE journey? Probably not really. We should get aquatic sciences though. So what we want to do is test a whole bunch of engines to see which one is actually best in EVE's very heavy atmosphere. Now, logically speaking, what you would want is the engine that has the smallest gap between the one atmosphere ISP and the vacuum ISP. Because if you extrapolate that to five atmospheres, which is what Eve in theory has, assuming that the curve stays the same, uh, we would be able to tell what the five atmosphere one would be. So not we wouldn't want the Labradoodle, we would potentially want the Mammoth. Let's say, you know, one atmosphere is 40 seconds, let's just pretend that it goes in a straight line, which it shouldn't, but um, then, you know, that's another 160 seconds of ISP less, so it's like 110, which is horrible, but at least it has something. Uh, so that's sort of the logic, but technically in Kerbal Space Program's configurations, somebody can write in whatever number they want for the five atmosphere specific impulse and also the five atmosphere thrust. The specific impulse and thrust are connected. Um, so whatever we have as far as the ISP there, we'll get for thrust. So the main cell, Mammoth, Rhino is actually a candidate too. Uh, that's a 
gap of 40, that's a gap of 40, that's a gap of 42. Skipper, well, it doesn't really have as much thrust as I expect that we need to have, but that's a gap of 40. This is a gap of 30, but again, it's too small. And then the vector has a gap of 30. So, I mean, the thing about the vector is we can cluster a whole bunch together. But that cluster is going to be... Well, I mean, it could still be the best idea. Because it has that low gap. But the dart has a gap of 20. However, it's just got to take up a lot of space. Some of you might have thought that we could look at this delta V tool to figure out the thrust weight ratio at Eve, but it doesn't seem like that's working. Which is sort of fine by me because I wanted to do the test anyway and find out. I like experimenting with things and figuring out via experimentation anyway, uh, getting experimental results and then basing it from that. But yeah, we should be able to figure this out. Maybe I need to F5 and F9. 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 Okay, let, let's just let's just restart it and see if that fixes the delta V tool. Eve. Okay, now it's saying E vacuum. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, well, looks like we don't have to do any experiment after all. Oh well. Okay. F5 and F9, folks. Apparently the cure all for all our ills. So 96 tons. 0.9, so that's 86.4 tons of thrust. Okay, uh, let me make that the root part. Okay, this one gets nothing. The Rhino gets nothing on Eve, it says. Aho, uh -oh. wow, that's a surprise, isn't it? Well, so the naive thing where we just extrapolate from the vacuum ISP and the one atmosphere ISP doesn't work for the Rhino. The Rhino gets no ISP on the surface of EVE, it seems. So we can't just look at those numbers and pretend we know something. All right. It'll take 2 minutes and 11 seconds to get no thrust, but anyway. Okay, this is 0.37, but we could cluster them, so let's just get a number. Main sail, 32.2 tons. So I should also note the delta V that we get out of it. This option only gets 1,423 from this tank. We'll need more than one engine here, but it gets 1,762. Now, skipper is not very useful. 0.03 thrust weight ratio. But at least it gets some thrust weight ratio. Could the Labradoodle surprise us? No. This gets zero. Uh, these should definitely get zero. Unless they've made some... Well, I actually got some Delta V there. That one's strictly zero. Okay, well, the vector. Oh, the vector is pretty good. Okay, well, this vector is surprisingly good. The vector is so immediately obviously good that we I just don't even need to look at anything else, I think. Yep, yep, we, we don't even need a different option. Okay, so the vector has a whole, when we put five of them on here, has a whole 1.29 thrust to weight ratio. And overwhelmingly good delta V. 130.3 tons of thrust. And comparing to their original number, yeah, the five vectors actually have the same thrust as one Mammoth 2. But on the surface of Eve, they get 130 tons of thrust, whereas the Mammoth 2 only gets 86. So that's a lot better. Maybe the dart would be even better, but we would need way too many of them for it to work out. So, so let's start from the top. Let's assume that it is telling us the truth. 
and go back to trying to figure out what combination of pods will be the most efficient. Um, of course, we could put them all in command chairs, but they that might be okay or might not be okay, I don't know. Also, there's a whole matter of heat shielding the thing. It didn't seem... I mean, well... How bad is Eve's atmosphere? <laughs> that's another question. That's a 2C... That's 0.75, that's about the same as that one. The, but the max temp is a worry, right? But they all have sort of the same max temp. Technically, the Explorer can... Per Kerbal is lighter than these. But then there's also the... The payload option. The passenger cabins. This one's 8 seats for just 4 tons. So that's 0.5 tons per Kerbal. That's also 0.5 tons per Kerbal. Same... Same. So these are all equivalent. So just for efficiency's sake, we might as well get this one. So we want this one and then a two-seater on top. We don't want to carry extra. That's one option for a two-seater, but that's a little bit less efficient than that, the stowaway. So we might as well just use the stowaway. <laughs> uh, cargo nose isn't very heavy. And since Eve's atmosphere is thick, we'll want a streamlined nose. We can also put other stuff in there. Uh, we should probably put a controller in there so that I can... Do remote control. And the batteries, maybe. And maybe the antenna, too. We should have an always open antenna, but... Because we want to be able to communicate with it in the atmosphere. Gosh darn it. Okay. But will that all fit in the nose? Seems that way. So that's good. Let's put some extra battery. Reaction wheel will be lower. Probably for reaction wheel power we want extra there. Let's... Let's have RTGs. Because, you know, solar panels are gonna get wrecked. Okay, Eve mission. Oh, I've got caps lock on from the previous thing. Eve mission. No further explanation necessary. Okay, we definitely want the color scheme of this to blend in with Eve. Because we don't want Eve to smite us. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, we, we want to sneak in. But really, heat shielding is going to be a worry. We have the inflatable heat shield, but it's not that huge. So, just, just out of curiosity, I mean, there's no way one stage is going to work out for us or anything. 2,000 meters per second like that. We need 8,000 to get into EVE orbit, the trip planner says. Now, I have no personal experience with getting into EVE orbit, so... So, for the round trip, it claims 20,000, but actually we don't need to do this 8. That the atmosphere will do for us and we also don't need to do this bit because the atmosphere will do that for us and probably we don't need to do this bit either so we're talking about maybe just conservatively 16,000 altogether so that's 4,000 for launch and it depends on how you feel about capturing around Eve with things probably we will let it capture uh, we'll just go straight in. So, an efficient stage is related to the ISP. We don't technically know the ISP of this at EVE, but we can extrapolate from the results I got. And basically, it's bad. <laughs> um, let, me, let me just get the number. 
It's about 96. It's like 100 seconds of ISP. So if we were basing our stages on that, we should get like 2,000, uh, sorry, 1,000 meters per second from each stage and just keep staging all over the place. But my supposition is that actually we need a lot of stages. Let's say by that point we don't need a thrust weight ratio of 1. The tuba has enough thrust, but it's heavier too. If we're in vacuum at that point, this is fine. If we're not in vacuum at that point, that would be trouble. But this will be not that bad if we're in vacuum too. So, this vacuum, 4,244. 20 kilometers, and this is starting to be okay. 24 kilometers, and it's better than this. The trouble is getting to 24 kilometers. This 1.11 thrust weight ratio in the atmosphere. Uh, in vacuum, sorry. This one is 0.6. But we better get it high enough so that's useful. Should I bother with a fairing? Remember, uh, ultimately we also have to launch this sucker. 0.83, so we're gonna need some boosters on this. 1.22 thrust weight ratio. But it, it, it can't be calculating this right. Because you've only got 2,000 meters per second, it says. Is that true? I feel like it's lying. Um, we, well, we need to feed lines in. Let's do that. Okay, well, I don't think it's going to tell me stuff. On the bright side, that looks sturdy. We could refuel stuff in carbon orbit. Eh, let's just launch a big thing. <laughs> we need parachutes, too. It looks kerbal. Probably should be green. Green and purple, do they go together? I feel like we, we've got to actual, actually have Kerbal Pride here. It looks very Kerbal. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's good, right? That's a positive thing. So I'm thinking like we need these on like all of them, but if I overlap them, is that a bad thing? I'm not fully asparagus staging it. We're just, we've just got a few lines going into the center, but that's because I don't think I want to do asparagus staging on this because every time you stage off the boosters for asparagus staging you go back down to a thrust weight ratio that's lower and so we don't want to do that we we want to keep as much thrust weight ratio as possible when we're early on we don't want to keep having the thrust weight ratio go down we've seen that before i did a asparagus staging thing with falcon and it kept losing the thrust weight ratio, and that was that didn't seem like it was a good thing. Okay, um, we how how many parachutes should we have on this? So this radio mount parachute has one third the mass of this one. This one says its deployed drag is three thousand nine hundred kilonewtons. This one's one thousand eight hundred. So. Three times this is 5,400 kilonewtons, so having three of those is better than having one of those. But then this one says deploy 2,800 kilonewtons. So that's even better. And then these drogue shoots are completely useless apparently. So um, we'd actually want a whole lot of those, but putting them on is a hassle. So I'll just go with these. I don't... it's Eve. We don't need that many, right? Okay, well, that that's a bunch. That's 42 parachutes, so it must be the answer. 
Well, I guess fairing enabled would be a good idea. I don't know. I said I guess fairing enabled would be a good idea. Why is fairing not enabled on that one? Hmm... I guess maybe. There's a little tiny gap there. <laughs> uh, there's too many of them. <laughs> um, there must be a better way. I could take all of them off and put them on again. But then would I really be sure that they were action grouped? Sometimes the action groups don't like pick up when you take things off and put them on again. Or with symmetry. Okay, hopefully that's all done. 42, alright. Toggle, alright, that's fine. Okay, so those are like that. Hmm. Alright, well, prospectively, let's just go with this. And build a launcher. And transfer vehicle. We have to launch it and transfer it. <laughs> How are we going to do this? Could could a swerve on the core be enough? But the thrust weight ratio is going to be a pain. <laughs> um, oh, but come on. I have more than what I had before. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with you? Nine, 940, okay. Am I on the wrong thing? Is that why it's not showing the Delta V? Seems like I'm on the right thing. Oh, now it's showing it. It says 1,200. That's enough to transfer to Eve. But is it telling me the truth? Oh! It's uh, sort of nosing into that. Hmm. Alright, we can get rid of this one. Okay, well, I guess I'll make more of this booster. And then we're going to have to add boosters to the boosters to the boosters or something. Why is it going like that? Seriously. 54 engines. It's lying about the Delta V. No! I can't tell. Well, I could do the calculations, but I'm too lazy. Why, <laughs> Why can't you figure out symmetry? Hmm. 5,400 tons. Tests would be a good idea for various reasons. Mostly exploding reasons. Um, but we don't have enough thrust to weight ratio, so we have to start off with that. We need more of that. I'm expecting that I need struts, and this is all going to fall apart and explode in the biggest non-nuclear explosion on Kerbin. But we, we, we'll we get to that. Uh, I still think that we need boosters with mammoths, probably. Oh, now it's showing 1.008. It just took a really long time to figure that out. Okay, we need two boosters for each one, but let's arrange them better. Well, I hope that pre-strutting, we're going to get a decent boom out of this. <laughs> and I'm not going to put launch clamps either, so that's pretty much guaranteeing it. Okay, there's one patch of six. Really, you have to be like that? Um, okay, that's, that's also associated with these boosters. Okay, so... I have no idea if this has enough delta V. It will get off the ground, though this is not saying so right now. Really? No, oh, there we go. <laughs> it took it a while. It took it a while. Um, some parts of this will get to orbit <laughs> by, by the explosion, yes. Uh, some parts of this will reach orbit just by the sheer force of the explosion. It's like that one uh, bottle cover, the mantle cover that was uh, launched out or whatever to like escape velocity. But anyway, uh, it can go up. So that's a start. 
Delta V wise, we have no clue what's happening here. We have no launch clamps. We have no struts right now. We will find out what we need to strut. We are not putting Kerbals in yet. There are no Kerbals. But it has capacity for 10. Okay. 411 parts and 7,721 tons. 